I was told to look for a Victoria in the lobby and that she would probably be flying a drone, so I'm assuming I found you. You found me. What do you do here? I am the engineering director of operations for the Unmanned Systems Research Institute. And we're How big is your business card? Seriously. <laughs> I woke up the other day and one of these things was hovering outside of my window. It scared the heck out of me. Camera on there? Camera on there. Now we're on the camera? You can see yourself. Look at that. <laughs> Hey, how are you? It's a selfie. How are you doing? Jamie, nice to meet Jamie, you. Jamie, do you know Victoria? We've met before. We've Have met you? A couple of times. And you're okay with what she's doing here inside your building? Oh, she's fantastic. So, so this thing is perfectly safe to operate both indoors and outdoors. So can you put it over there? I can. What exactly is your role? So I'm the director of the Unmanned Systems Research Institute at Oklahoma State University. Unmanned Systems Research Institute yeah. at OSU. Right. And how does that dovetail with where I'm standing right now. You know, everything that USRI does is focused around developing autonomous systems for applications to help make the world a better place. In this case, really focused on the energy sector, everything from oil and gas, you know, to be able to help search for things such as methane leaks or uh, carbon capture. Give me like a real world example. If there's some sort of rupture in a pipe, she was talking about plumes that I guess are indicative of a problem that could lead to a worse problem. This lets you identify it earlier than you otherwise might? Yeah, so you know, something like a methane gas leak, it's not something you can detect with the naked eye. They're really hard to find because you can have tens and tens of miles of pipeline and you know you have a loss on there somewhere but you don't know where that is. So flying a drone over it with a detector on board right. allows you to map that in real time. Net zero process. So, a stupid question, but just in broad terms, the impact of technology on oil and natural gas, there's always been a game-changing component, no matter what decade we're talking about. But where are we now in terms of the significance of that? Yeah, I, I say, you know, we're at the, the early stages of that, and the, the wild west of you know, being able to take this new technology out into the field. So there's a multitude of applications that we haven't really thought about yet in terms of how you can use these types of autonomous systems to be able to improve productivity in the field. It's funny, because there's so much in this industry that gets described as the Wild West, even I mean, from the wild catters, right? I mean, everything always seems to have an element of, we're going for it. It's, it's, a, it's a bold new world, but there's always technology coming along with it. And is that, that's sort of the overall purpose, I guess, of the whole institute? It really is, right? And it's taken technology from the laboratory that's being developed by students and faculty researchers, and then you know, marrying that directly with industry to see how those applications you know, can help them on a daily basis. So it sounds like, in layman's terms, all you're really trying to do is change the world and everything in it. Just a little bit of time. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure.